Hi, everybody. In this video, I want to take a look at a topic that I've been meaning to do a video on for quite a while now, and that is the use of 3D people in your architectural rendering scenes. So my students recently just finished up their first commercial property render, and it was a really good chance to instruct them on how I think people should, or more specifically, should not be used in an architectural rendering scene. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at a pretty bad example. So this is just a quick sample scene that I made up uh, using just really content from the SketchUp warehouse. It's a really beautiful model that somebody made and put up on the warehouse. Now, you can see here, this is sort of kind of shot that you'd get with maybe somebody just starting out in architectural rendering or arc viz. And um, it's not altogether, you know, unpleasant, but the thing we want to focus on is the people. Now, there are a number of chief issues with this image, and I'm going to go through them, but you've probably, hopefully, already spotted one or two of them. Let's talk about the first one, which is sort of, in my mind, the cardinal sin, if you will, of using people in your architectural rendering scenes. And uh, you can probably spot it because it's making eye contact with you. The first issue is this. You can see here that we've got people directly facing the camera. Now, this is sort of a problem for a couple of reasons. The first is that, uh, invariably, you know, people are hardwired to make eye contact with other people. We're hardwired to sort of form a social connection with them. And eye contact is the chief means we do that. So what that means is if you look at a render like this, your eye is going to go back constantly to the face as opposed to looking at the actual design or the building. The other issue with that is really just uh, CG faces just look terrible. You know, there is a concept known as the uncanny valley. You may or may not be familiar with this, but it's where something elicits a lifelike-ish vibe. In other words, it looks human, vaguely human, like a mannequin, but isn't realistic enough. And as such, we find it very deeply unsettling. And you can really, really see this, for example. Yeah, that's kind of terrifying. Now, this is somewhat true of whether you're using people in, in this case, D5, Lumion, or Twinmotion. Those are the software that I've the most experienced with. But all in all, you know, the people just do not look right. Now, the D5 ones are beautifully done, I'm not going to say they're not, and you can kind of see some unbelievably high fidelity here, I mean, the hair there is just brilliant. But still, all in all, they're good, they're not good enough. And so, the first thing you want to do is just make sure there's nobody staring at the camera. The second issue, and you've probably already spotted this one as well, is the use of duplicates. And I, I do see kind of people do this every now and then, and, you know, probably well-meaning. They probably find, like, a person model, like this dude here, and you go, that looks great. I'll use him again and again. And you can kind of see, again, he's got that weird Uncanny Valley expression going on. And here he is again, you know, with his walk cycle interrupted, and he's just kind of standing there unrealistically at the actual counter. So the second thing I'll say is, do not repeat people at all. And, and... Some of you more experienced will probably be like, yeah, that's a no-brainer. Obviously, you don't do that. But, you know, it's the type of thing you actually have to learn if you're just starting out. The third thing you might notice about this is effectively sort of the distinct lack of diversity. And so, you know, really what you need is a variety of people, effectively a representative sample of the population. And here, all we have is sort of effectively the same sort of I'm assuming, you know, 20-something-ish looking person. There's nobody really young, except for this creepy child, and there's nobody really old as well. Quite simply then, there's a lack of really diversity in the characters, and as such, it's not very representative of the real world. Now, there's two other issues that I want to point out with this. Let's zoom in really, really quickly. And this is a really common one when you're working with 3D people. Hopefully you've already spotted it. And there we go. One of the issues with matching your people to a design that came from a different program, for example, in this case, SketchUp to D5, 
is going to be the relative height of objects. It might look great in SketchUp, even if you followed perfect scale. But once you get it to another rendering program, you might find out that the internal scales don't match. And so in an attempt to maybe fix that, you're thinking, okay, I'll, I'll have some people sitting on these chairs. But if you're going to do that, you need to be very, very careful that the people that are in a posed, for example, a seated position, are actually making contact with the furniture. And sometimes you might have to rejig the scale of either your SketchUp or the D5 or Lumion or Crin Motion people just to get them to match. Now, people not sitting on chairs, again, pretty common. I think for beginners, you just sort of plop them and hope that it looks good. One of the other issues is also going to be people sort of floating into and out of the ground. Now, this does happen in D5 a little bit because D5 seems to try and figure out where you're trying to place an object, in this case, uh, an animated person, and it tries to kind of snap them to what it perceives to be the ground. Now, this is generally very, very good, but sometimes you will run into issues if you place a character and then you just sort of remove them a little bit or put them on a maybe an upper step or a lower step, you'll find that they don't line up perfectly. And so what you get is something like this, feet going through the floor, again, in a slightly horrifying fashion. Now, the last issue to top off these is going to be the lack of logical placement. So in other words, you can see this in a couple of ways. The first is there's this really awesome model here, this like uh, teen or whatever she is with her books, you know, perfect for like a school setting or something like this. But she's just sort of weirdly standing in the corner. And um, yeah, I mean, this looks like she's in the scene. It's just sort of odd. The second issue goes back to our duplicate character here. This guy does not really look like he actually belongs here. Again, it looks very much like a walk or idle cycle has just been stopped. And you'll also notice that there's really nobody behind the bar here. And so, you know, maybe you're thinking, all right, this looks fine because, you know, really, you're just showing off the building. But it's the type of very small and subtle thing that I think people will pick up on. It'll be like, where's the person behind the bar? Because we're all used to to that paradigm or that schema that there is, you know, there'll be somebody behind the bar. Now, on one other side note, um, I do have this nice couple model here. I think it's actually really, really great. They're really great for this type of cafe shot. And the issue here, one last thing, is just the fact that they're being cut off completely. Even with the glass being made very translucent, you can kind of see the bars of the glass are literally just cutting across the face, and that ruins it quite a bit. Okay. Now, with that being said, this is our kind of worst case example, uh, short of maybe, you know, having somebody like right up into the camera, please don't ever do that. So let's take a look at a better setup using the exact same scene, but hopefully with all of these issues fixed. All right, welcome back everybody. If you've made it to the second part of this video, thank you so much for watching, really do appreciate it, and um, thank you for all the comments and the likes and all those subscription things. Uh, it's been really cool to just engage with people and have discussions about architectural rendering, so thanks a million. You can see here, this is the altered and sort of updated version of this render. This is effectively the fixed version of the same render. Now, please note, I'm not hugely concerned with the overall look of the render itself. I, I don't, it's purely for demonstration. I don't think it's a great render at all. But to hopefully highlight what we're talking about, which is the use of people. All right. So the first issue we mentioned in the last part was people facing the camera. And you'll notice that for the most part, we've practically eliminated that. Now, there are some people somewhat looking towards each the camera. But generally speaking, there's nobody looking directly at the camera. Now, what's also interesting is if you do have people in your scene, you can kind of see here, this person to the right. Again, not really in love with the people models per se, but you can see the eye line is directed to another person, not directly at you, the viewer. And as such, instead of making us uncomfortable because of that uncanny valley effect, it actually just kind of draws us in because we tend to want to look at what other people are looking at. So just something to keep in mind, nobody's facing the camera. In addition, we've eliminated any duplicate people. Everyone is effectively a sort of unique and individualized character. And that way you eliminate that weird sort of living mannequin effect. In addition, we've also increased the level of diversity, both in terms of age, you can see over here, and just in terms of cultural representation. 
So for example, we've just got a more diverse and interesting range of characters. And this looks a lot more realistic, I think, to a normal sort of commercial space. We've also taken steps to ensure that nobody is floating or crashing through geometry. You can kind of see that again with the people sitting, and you can also see it with the shoes. We want to try and eliminate any of that feeling that somebody is effectively floating. Now, the last thing we've done is fix the placement, if you will, of the people to make it a bit more logical. So, for example, you can see we have multiple parties engaged in conversation. We have another party over here. Again, their face is no longer being blocked by the bars of the window. You can see they're sitting in a corner effectively reading. And we've got two people still at the bar, but we also have a person behind the bar as well. You can also see there are some people doing actual gestures. Easy way to do this is to just find the animatable characters in your program and just pause. In this case, we're using D5, so you can just stop the animation cycle at any point. All right. With that being said, there's just one more topic I want to talk about, and that is using AI to enhance the faces of your characters. Let's take a quick look at an example. All right, everybody. Here we are over in Kriya, K-R-E-A, AI. So Kriya, AI. Now, um, any content in this section of the video, I really owe to a couple of people who are posting on the D5 forum on Facebook and also to the user yoga for arc who's a really popular YouTuber who did a whole video on this. Um, I think he's from Malaysia. Really great uh, stuff. But um, he did an interesting video on this, and his results were really good. Mine, not so much. Now, the first thing I want to point out, here is that sort of bad model that's facing the camera from the first one. Let's look at what the AI did. Now, I, I had the sort of Kriya AI just sort of read the picture that I uploaded and created a prompt for this. You could probably add in your own prompt. And I've, I have sort of just toggled some of the settings here. And let's take a quick look. D5 model. Kriya AI model. Okay, you can see there is some definite improvements there. I mean, it really, they, they just looks incredible. The problem is all of the other characters. Let's take a look at, well, yeah, you can kind of see. Let's bring the slider back here a second. It did a really good job with the guy. You know, you can really see the face there and the arms, like going from those plastic arms to sort of more, I'm not going to say photorealistic, but a little bit better. But then when you move over to the child, you can see it's all sorts of problematic. Now, the other issue is also the hands. This is an issue that's, I think, been known and sort of laughed at uh, for quite a while with AI images, is that it's really terrible at fingers. Now, basically because of the complexity of hands, it has a hard time understanding them and making them better. You can see D5's hands look a bit more realistic. And then you can see there's just problems here with the joints. There's also issue with the child's face. This is probably because a lot of AI tools... Um, you know, I don't think they're data scraping really pictures of children. I think that's sort of intentional. But um, yeah, still just ee, not great. And then the last one we want to mention was our repeating character back here. And it's it's become some sort of like Doctor Who style nightmare. Now, I'm not saying that this is going to be everyone's experience. But by and large, yeah, I, I'm not. Ooh, that's just really bad. Uh, I'm just not yet convinced that this is going to sort of fix anything. Uh, yeah, it's, it's very cool. It's really, really cool. I mean, that looks really good, right? For the most part, hands are still janky, uh, but, you know, it looks more realistic. But uh, all in all, the big issue with this is that even if you use AI to fix your characters, you still shouldn't be putting characters close to the camera anyway. All characters should effectively be moving away from the camera or looking sort of away or at something else. And so it's a great fix for a problem that you really shouldn't have, I think, if you're using uh, characters correctly. All right. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and leave it there for today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.